Hey guys, and welcome to the first part of the V-Ray series. In the first introduction video that I uploaded the other day, uh, I briefly went over what we were going to be creating and what we were going to be working with here. So in order to follow along with this tutorial, if you don't have your own scene file, uh, you're going to need to download this scene file, which I have provided for you in the video description of the introduction video. So if you want to follow along uh, you'll have to download that scene file and open it up and it also comes with the textures that we're going to be using for this scene. Now the first thing you have to understand when working with V-Ray is that in order for V-Ray to work properly we have to have a combination of several things working together. The first thing is we have to enable the V-Ray engine. So we'll go over to the render settings and we need to go to the general tab here on the left hand side and then we can activate the V-Ray bridge so we'll turn that on and now we get our V-Ray tab over here so we'll click on that and here are the V-Ray parameters so the first thing that I would like to do is just turn on the GI engine so we need to go over here to indirect illumination and we need to click GI on that will turn it on and then we need to choose a preset now until we get around to actually rendering the final image which is going to be the high quality image I only want a medium type of preset right now so what I'm gonna choose is the a medium non animation preset and I'm gonna choose number three here which is the IRLC which stands for irradiance map and light cache and a good rule of thumb is that when you want to do interior scenes your primary bounce needs to be irradiance map and your secondary needs to be light cache now we also have BR which is listed on some of these and that is brute force and brute force can also be used for interior but it does take a lot longer to render and usually brute force is preferred when doing exterior shots so in this case we're just going to stick with the general rule of thumb of using the irradiance map and the light cache so I'm going to choose number three here which is medium and I'm going to choose that okay now since we have that turned on now we need to set up a light now in this case I want to make this a bright early afternoon type shot so we need a clear bright sunny day so I'm going to create an infinite light because the infinite light is the best choice to use when you're wanting to create sunlight. So I'm going to right click on it and give it a target tag and I want it to target the walls so we need to go find the wall. So we need to open up the room structure null and scroll down to the very last object in the hierarchy which is walls and we'll drag that into the target object. So now we can move this light around and it will target our room and now we can just pull this into the direction we want our sun to point and the way the infinite light works is that whichever way the Z handle is pointed that is the direction of the sunlight so we want this to be over to one side slightly and we want it up that's a bit too much over there so I want it back here and up high in the sky and I think that'll work okay so like I was saying there are several things that need to work together in order for V-Ray to work the first one was turning on the V-Ray engine which that's obvious the second one is V-Ray tags so in order for V-Ray to pick up on your lights what you have to do is you have to assign V-Ray tags to your objects. So in this case we have a light. So we need to right click on it and go to V-Ray tags, V-Ray light. Any type of light you have in your scene has to have a V-Ray light tag. So we'll click on the tag and here in the common tab we need to scroll down and we need to enable shadows. Then we'll go over to the sunlight tab and we need to activate physical sky so we'll turn that on and here we have sun invisible and what that means is that if you have any reflective type of object in your scene 
and you want it to pick up any type of highlight or reflections from the sun itself, then you're going to need to leave this option disabled. But as soon as you turn this option on, what that means is that you're not going to see the reflection of the sun in anything at all. So I would prefer just to leave this off. And we need to come down and activate physical sky. So we'll turn that on. And we have the CIE clear sky. So all of these parameters right now can stay where they're at. There's really no need to change any of them right now. So for right now, all of these settings at their default values will work just fine for us. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is set up a camera. That is the third thing that we need to do. So we need to go and create a camera. And of course, we have to give this camera a V-Ray tag. So we'll right click on it, V-Ray tags, and we'll go to V-Ray physical camera. So we need to jump into the camera. So just click on this little black square outline here. Click on it to turn white to jump into the camera. And we need to position this camera in our room where we want it. Now, in this particular room, I did not put any furniture on this back side of the wall because I wanted my camera to look outward towards the sliding glass doors here to look out at the beach and the deck on the back side of the house. Now, if you want your camera to look inward, then you're probably going to need to put some furniture or something here against this wall. And just to make things a little easier to view here in the viewport, I'm just going to disable the light from being seen in the viewport, and now we can get a better look at this. So I'm going to take the camera in, and I'm going to position it. So the first thing that I see right now is the field of view. You'll notice that we have these darker shaded areas over here, these bars on the side of the viewport on each side. And anything that is being seen within that sidebar area will not be rendered when it comes time to render the image. So what that means is that our field of view is actually within this area here. So we need to position our camera at an angle in which we can pick up uh, a pretty good shot of everything. So I'm just going to move this camera in a little closer. Because I want to get some of this uh, nightstand over here in the shot. And I want to get some of this dresser as well. So in order to do that, we may need to change the focal length on the camera. So if we take it in, that's kind of zooming in. So we need to back this out just a little bit. Okay, so a value of 25 is giving us a nice wide look here, and that actually might be a little too much. I'm thinking that towards the end of this, we may need to go back and change it back to the default settings. But for now, we'll just leave it where it's at to see how this looks. Okay, so now we have our camera positioned in a rough spot, and we need to click on the physical camera tag here. And we need to go into the lens parameters, and this is where we can adjust a few things here, such as the ISO, the f-stop, and the shutter speed values. Now for right now, I'm going to leave all of these at their default setting. So what we'll do now is we'll just make a little preview render with all of these default settings, and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so it's not looking too bad. Uh, we really don't have any material applied to this, but you can see we've got a lot of oversaturation here on the deck. So let's see if we can maybe clean some of this up. So the first thing we want to do is jump into the render settings, and we need to go over into the color mapping tab. And the type, by default, is set to linear multiply. So we want to change that to Reinhard. And the burn value here, I'm going to take that down to a value of 0.5. And we need to adjust the gamma value here. So I'm going to change that to 2.2. And I'm going to go back. And I'm going to render that again. And you can see just how much brighter it made it. And we've also reduced quite a bit of the burning uh, by using the burn value feature here. By taking that down, we've actually reduced a lot of that oversaturation. So I want to activate the linear workflow option. And what this does is it renders the scene in a linear color workspace. 
Uh, I'm sure some of you are probably familiar with this option in R12 because R12 does have the linear workflow option. Uh, of course, I'm not using R12. I have 11.5, so I have to use the DGAMA plugin in order to do that. However, with V-Ray, we do have the linear workflow option. So I'm going to turn that one on. We'll go back and I'll render this one more time. All right, so I think what we need to do now is just uh, make some adjustments here to the film ISO, the f-stop, and the shutter value. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the film ISO up to maybe a value of 300. And I'll make another preview render again. Okay, now by doing that, we really brightened up the area over here by the bed, but at the same time, you can see just how overly saturated, again, the area outside is. So let's see if we can fix this by reducing the burn value. So let's take the burn value down to maybe 0.3. Okay, so I think that looks a little better. It still is a little too bright, and we could probably go into some of the settings here, but since we don't have any material applied to anything here in the scene, then there's really no reason to go any further right now with the lighting, because I would like to set up the materials first, and then we can go back and fine-tune the lighting. All right, so that concludes this part, and in the next part, we will continue on with setting up some materials for our room.